But anyway, back to the meatballs. All right. These are great because you can uh, make them ahead of time and then just bake them off and then let them sit in your slow cooker. And they've got a really wonderful, yummy holiday sauce, a cranberry, kind of a sweet and sour sauce. So one sip of coffee and we're going to get to making those meatballs. Mmm. That tastes good. It's so cold out there. My goodness. Hope it warms up a little bit. All right. So we're going to start out with two pounds of ground beef. I always buy ground beef in the bigger packages because I think they save a lot of money. This is nice, beautiful ground beef from Festival. And then we're going to add to that two eggs. got a little bit of a couple teaspoons of dried minced onion. I like a lot of garlic salt. This is a lot of meat here. So a good couple teaspoons, maybe even up to a tablespoon of garlic salt. Some black pepper. This is a pretty simple meatball recipe. What gets exciting is the sauce. And then some breadcrumbs. I'm going to add those breadcrumbs in just a minute. In fact, Speaking of the sauce, let's go ahead and get that started. I mentioned that I love this recipe because it's um, very seasonal. You can actually do this all year round, um, but I like the fact, I like to use cranberries during the holidays because it's one of those things where we usually only use them for um, Thanksgiving and Christmas, and I just love cranberries, and I think cranberries are just very festive, very holiday. So as much as I can use them during the holidays, I do. So we've got one can of the whole berry cranberry sauce. This is just going to make the nicest sauce to go with these meatballs. Everybody loves it. They really do. All right, so one can. That was a nice hot pan. I've got some brown sugar. Cranberries can be a little bit tart, so depending on how sweet you like it. A couple tablespoons up to a quarter cup of brown sugar with that one can of wholeberry cranberry sauce. Now we're going to add a bottle of chili sauce. This is a 12 ounce bottle. And chili sauce is kind of, um, well it's kicked up ketchup and it's basically just, um, you know, got a little bit more going on, a little bit more of flavor than regular ketchup. So we've got one whole bottle in here and the hardest part about that is getting it out of the, getting it out of the bottle. And sometimes what I do, wait, don't you dare take that top of that jar there, Ann. You almost got your, your fingers snapped off. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a big fan of doing this, and a lot of you guys um, have told me you do it too, and I, lo I love that. There's still some sauce in there. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll just get, and I do this with jars of spaghetti sauce all the time, just a little bit of water. Just give it a good shake just to get every little last bit of that sauce out of there. Don't want that to go to waste. Okay. And I'm just heating this sauce a little bit to combine it all. And the last thing I'm going to add is about a quarter cup of a dry red wine. I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. This happens just to be a, a, a Cabernet. If you don't like to cook with wine, just leave it out. Not a big deal. It's just going to give it a nice holiday, you know, flavor. And we're going to simmer this sauce so most of that alcohol will cook right out of there and we'll just have that nice red wine flavor. So I'm just going to let that cook for a minute and I'm going to get back to the meatballs. I'm going to go wash my hands because I'm dealing with ground beef and I want to make sure we're nice and clean here because I really think the best way to deal with meatballs and meatloaf, the only way, is just to get right in there. So that's what I'm going to do. And I start out with about a half cup of breadcrumbs, and then I can always add more. I've also got some water here, so I kind of judge as I go. If you add too, too many breadcrumbs, the, the meatballs tend to get a little bit dry. So, But you need those breadcrumbs to kind of bind them together. So. Kind of up to you how much you put in there, but 
These are looking great. Now, I want these to be cocktail bite-sized meatballs, just a little guy. So, you know, about one inch, something like that. Because um, I want people to just be able to, you know, use a toothpick, just pop them right into their mouth and make sure you have plenty. This recipe makes about 50 meatballs. So if you've got, you know, maybe allow, if this is, if you're just having an hors d'oeuvre party, you know, I allow a good five to 10 meatballs per person. So this looks perfect actually. All right, I'm gonna start rolling here. Get out of the way. Now, what you do is you just roll these up and you see I've got I'm trying to make life easy it's the holidays and I don't want to be scrubbing pots and pans and cookie sheets so I've got foil lined cookie sheet and I'm just going to start rolling my meatballs so this is something you could totally do the day before get it done get it out of the way you could even bake these off the day before. So we're gonna bake these, we're not gonna fry these. I've got my oven preheated to about 375 degrees. And you get the idea, we just keep on rolling. I talked to my sister yesterday in Arizona and she's like, oh my gosh, we're freezing here, it's so cold. And I'm like, tell me about it. <laughs> I love to give them a hard time when the folks in Phoenix complain about their cold weather. All right. So you just keep rolling, you get the idea. All right. And you'll have, like I say, about 50 meatballs when you're all done. So we'll keep working on those. Got a hungry crew here. Wash my hands again and look at back to the sauce. And they bake, the meatballs need to bake, depending on your oven temperature, I bake them at about 375, and they take anywhere between about 15 to 30 minutes, depending on the size of your meatballs. You'll notice they just start getting brown. So let's go back to our oven. Um, the other thing is, is I've got a, a slow cooker here, and you guys told me about these crock pot liners and they are wonderful I have fallen in love with them somehow when things get into a crock pot sometimes the inner crock is just impossible to get clean so these are wonderful all right here we go let's get to these meatballs they look beautiful and they're gonna get even better. So at this point, we're gonna get them into our slow cooker, or if you have a chafing dish, something like that, that works great too. And they get nice and brown in the oven, they really do. No need to fry them, that's just one more messy step. Oop, I'll have to have that meatball for myself. Oh, what the heck. All right. And then you're gonna take that sauce and pour it right over the top and really let that sauce get in there. Turn your slow cooker on low and you're ready for a fun party. Did you see the gingerbread house? And no, I didn't make it. Greg, did you get a shot of that gingerbread house? The folks at festival put that together and it's so cute. Makes a great centerpiece and it's edible too. So, all right. So this wonderful, there it is, isn't that cute? So the cranberry wine sauce goes right over the top of those meatballs. Put your lid on and hey, let the party start. You're out of the kitchen and you're relaxing with your guests and it's my kind of recipe and everybody just gobbles these up.